We're talking about increase. Psalm 115 verse 14 says, The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Isn't it good that God's got a plan to bless you and your children? And in biblical terms, children were not just the next generation, but they were the grandchildren as well. And the Bible says that a good man will leave an inheritance to his children and his children's children. So I believe it's God's purpose and plan that we be a blessing to our generation, and then through what we leave, we, we're a blessing to at least two more generations after. And to do that, you can't be broke. Now, there's this idea in the church world. It's uh, not only there, that there are people outside the church who certainly want to impose this kind of thinking on church people. This whole idea that the church shouldn't really have much because they think piety is a sign of holiness. That's, I, I'm sorry, that poverty is a sign of holiness and that to be poor is to be pious. And they'll point out certain people in history that didn't have a lot of things that did a lot of good. And thank God for what anybody does that's good. But there are some misconceptions about this idea of increase that we need to learn to accept from the Word of God. For instance, the Apostle Paul traveled almost always with an entourage of people who were with him, and they were helping him, and they were his ministry team. And anybody that's traveled knows that you don't travel free. You, you don't travel if you're broke. As a matter of fact, there's a good possibility that somebody, and maybe more than one somebody, will be listening to this, this uh, recording who would like to go somewhere, but you're waiting on money. You can't just do what you want to do because... You don't have enough money to do it. That's not a condemnation. That doesn't mean you won't get there, but what it means is you don't move around the world without money. So the Apostle Paul obviously was not broke. He was, he was partnered by the Philippian church, for instance, and uh, they gave once and again to his necessity. I'm not saying that he lived a posh lifestyle wasting all kinds of resources that could have been used in positive ways. But I'm saying that he didn't do without his needs met. And I want you to know that that's certainly where God wants you to be today, is to have no needs unmet. He wants you to have more than enough to meet your needs so that you can be a blessing. We, we call it around here being blessed to be a blessing. That's the will. That's the purpose of God. And so we need to get our minds around these things. And also we need to understand that there are degrees of blessings. You know, when we think about a thermostat, there's one over here in the sanctuary over here on the wall that controls the temperature in this room. And we determine how hot or how cool this room is by just pushing a button and setting the thermostat. Now, you need to understand that in your life, you are setting the degree of your increase. You are setting the thermostat of increase in your life through the realization of God's word, God's will, his purpose, his plan, to understand how God thinks. God doesn't think little. In Ephesians 3.20, he says, the word says there, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. There's a whole lot there, but I want you to realize that God can do bigger than anything you can think. But he does qualify it, saying that it's tied to the amount of power at work in us. Now, the power of God is contingent upon the Word of God in our lives and the degree we allow the Holy Spirit to move and work in our lives. It's activated through various ways. Primarily, it's voice activated. Primarily, it's through the confessions, the professions, the proclamations of our mouth in faith as we speak the Word and as we declare what we believe and also through this powerful means of releasing His power as we pray in other tongues. That's why being baptized in the Spirit and speaking in tongues is one of the reasons it's so important because it's a way that we build up ourselves, as the Word tells us, or we edify ourselves. And as we do that, the power of God is at work on the inside, deep within. And the more power at work in us, the greater God can manifest Himself in our lives.